What is up guys, Zan from the Zan Madden YouTube channel and we are just over a month into Madden 24. I hope you guys are enjoying the game as much as I am. And in today's video, we are going to tackle the overview of how to win more games in Madden 24. Now this video is not gonna be necessarily focused on an offensive scheme or a defensive scheme so much as it's going to be focused on lots of general things that you guys need to implement to set yourself up for success. So with that being said, I do wanna mention if you guys want to accelerate your growth in Madden 24. You guys need to check out my strategy website, gridirongameplans.gg. In the first month, we have put out a record-breaking amount of content, by far the most content I put out in the first 30 days of any Madden season. We got six offensive and defensive game plans over on the website for you guys, and well over 50 vault tips in just the first month. And that is not all. We're gonna be continuing to push content out in the vault and in the game plan section in the form of updates, AP setups, things of that nature as the season goes on. And you guys can also hop into our members-only Discord where you guys can converse with other members of the Gridiron Gang. And we also have lab sessions in there every Wednesday. It's only $9.95 per month. You guys unlock everything on the website. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the settings that we want to use when we play Madden 24. Now, for some of you guys out there, these will differ a little bit. Maybe it's eyesight issues. Maybe it's audio changes that you may want, depending on whether you stream the game or you just play casually by yourself. Those things will differ, but for the most part, your game options are gonna tend to be the same if you take the game somewhat seriously. So starting off, if you guys are aspiring to play MCS or if you guys play Mutt Champs, you will want to make sure your difficulty skill level is set to all Madden. If you guys only play all pro seasons, you guys can crank this back to all pro. The differences between all pro and all Madden are very noticeable with the big one being that you will not benefit from previous play so no more running the ball on first down to see what your opponent's coverage is and then calling the coverage bomb on the next play for whatever previous play tells you it's going to be on you as a madden player to make those reads live in game and find those little adjustments that players make and that's what this channel is for and gridiron game plan so if you guys struggle with those subscribe right here to the zan madden youtube channel hit that notification bell and obviously drop a comment below to help push this video out in the algorithm in terms of game style you guys are going to want to make sure that you have this set to competitive this is supposed to be the most consistent or contain the least random variability of the play styles arcade is going to be more juke moves spin moves broken tackles aggressive catches and double and triple coverage and things of that nature online play is not played on arcade simulation is going to be more so for uh cfm players that maybe have a 32 man cfm where they like that randomness of you know sunday football where the bouncers are just a little bit more odd and sometimes you get a guy who fumbles even though he has 99 carry and the guy has 50 hit power you know you're going to get those types of things on simulation on competitive mode it tends to try to respect the ratings now obviously competitive madden players will do things like loop blitzing and all kinds of craziness where you're going to be like well my 99 offensive tackle missed this block how did that happen that's more so coding issue uh but again competitive is trying to lend itself more towards consistent outcomes in a very random game so you guys are going to want to set this to competitive from here uh your quarter length that doesn't really matter for online play this is all personal preference uh i turn accelerated play call uh play clock off when i'm labbing offline let's get to the coin toss uh, i think this is the most important part of the game because this is where your game planning can start and uh if you guys aren't choosing coin toss first choice to kick you are probably doing it wrong that is unless maybe you're trying to do objectives for a comp pass or something and you're struggling with offensive stats people are quitting right away uh maybe then you'd set to receive but kick is the most important thing that you guys will want to do because it is going to allow you guys to have the ball at halftime if you guys get a stop early in the game you have the ball again at half you may win off of that alone just having the ball at halftime allows you to manage the end of the first half be the last person to score and the first person to possess the ball once again in the second half that 14 point swing is huge if you guys can achieve that so most players will choose kick now the second coin toss choice is going to be against the wind simply put this is going to give you the wind in the fourth quarter when those clutch kicks are necessary it's never fun to be kicking into a seven mile an hour wind at chicago uh, or if you're playing an opponent that has an outdoor home stadium, you want that in your favor. So make sure you guys have against the wind. Now this right here is where I'm gonna tell you what most players do because 
I don't do it this way. But if you guys want to do what you see most other players do, whether it be other Madden YouTubers or Twitch streamers or MCS pros that you guys see play in these tournaments, you guys are going to set your freeform passing mechanics to placement. Now, there are players out there that say placement uh inaccuracy is better um i will tell you this most quarterbacks in the game are going to hit 85 short medium and deep accuracy and if you guys have quarterbacks that meet those thresholds all three you guys could go ahead and just turn this to placement okay placement and accuracy adds a accuracy component to that little arc that appears over a receiver's head when you go to throw. And if you guys can release the meter, similar to how 2K has their shot meter for greens, in the actual green portion, you will throw an accurate football. So this is good for quarterbacks that maybe don't have high accuracy ratings. Uh, again, once you meet that 85 threshold, your quarterback's gonna throw an accurate ball unless they're off platform or pressured by a defensive lineman or running while they're throwing. Uh, if their feet are set and they have 85 accuracy, short, medium, or deep, depending on the area of the field that you're attacking, you'll notice virtually no difference between these two ratings. Um, you may hear other people say otherwise. I disagree. Um, you know, again, if your quarterback's great, just go placement. Passing slowdown doesn't matter unless you play offline and you just want to practice and have the game kind of go into slow-mo mode so you can practice reticle placement. When you guys play online, this is never going to be the case. So uh, turn this off. You're never, ever going to benefit from this in online play if you're looking to play head to head this doesn't matter free form reticle max distance most pro players play on near the reason for this is they don't like to overthrow the football when they're placing the reticle you still hear a lot of players constantly say and they say it in a mocking tone oh perfect pass accuracy out of reach well they think that that's ea's fault what it really means is you threw the ball exactly where your thumb put the reticle but it happened to be out of reach of the wide receiver so that was user error a lot of players for the last two years have been totally misconstruing uh, and, and thinking that this was just a bug in the game. And no, it's self-inflicted. Now, I'm not saying there aren't catch hole bugs in the game, but near does cut down on the distance in which you can throw the ball away from the wide receiver, which is gonna make it so much easier for you guys to throw the ball near the wide receiver so he can get a catch. Now, your freeform reticle speed. A lot of players in the pro community are sending this real low this year. Last year, we were 20 out of 20 on near. This year, we're seven out of 20 on near. So um, if you guys wanna pass like most players do out there in the community, this is a great starting point for you. However, if you guys want to completely change the way that you throw the football in Madden, I use a completely different set of max distance and speed for my reticle to pull off some unique catches and make some unique throws that are completely impossible on near. I've had a lot of players out there that have no clue that the rocket catch is back in Madden 24. It is back in a huge way. If you guys struggle with man-to-man -man coverage, if you wanna put the ball in crazy places against zone, I've got the setup for you. Go check out my free forming seminars in the game plan section over on Gridiron Game Plans. But, as I mentioned, this is the setting for most pros. If you wanna mimic that, this is the way to go. Now let's get into gameplay helpers. This one is uh, a little bit different um, because you may see some settings that I have different from other pro players. Uh, with auto flip defensive play call, um, this is basically a setting that you guys can choose to turn on or off in game. So it doesn't really matter what you have here. Um, I prefer for the most part to leave auto flip defensive play call on. Why is this important? Well, this is going to align your nickel corner uh, and align him to passing strength against certain formations like trip sets, or it will align him to run strength against heavier run formations like jumbo. So having the auto flip defensive play call on basically makes it where you can determine what coverage you want to call. And then if your opponent comes out with their strength to the short side of the field and you weren't expecting that, it will auto flip your nickel corner to the correct side. This isn't perfect. Uh, sometimes you will notice that a game auto flips a nickel corner according to the pass strength and maybe you wanted them to the run strength. Um, a good example would be a, a formation that has two tight ends to one side of the field and two receivers to the other side of the field with the running back in the backfield on the tight end side. Sometimes you'll notice that the nickel corner gets kind of manipulated on auto flip. So you may wish to turn this setting off mid game. So that way you can choose the side of the field you want from the play call menu. The next one is almost universally used, and that is going to be defensive ball hawk. Defensive ball hawk is a very, very important 
uh, mechanic in the game. This is essentially the mechanic that allows your players to jump up at high point interception animations at the best moment when the ball is entering their catch radius. This is really, really good because you can go attack the football and not have to wait for it to hit you in the chest and body catch it, which is going to lead towards the receiver jumping in front of you more often. So pretty much every player I've seen uses this as a uh, setting. Very, very few players uh, choose to leave this off. Now, one setting that I do leave off that most players leave on, and trust me, I'm gonna explain why, is defensive heat seeker assist. There are a lot of players out there that believe that the defensive heat seeker needs to be on because this is going to steer your player towards the ball carrier when you are attempting to try to chase them down and tackle them. My contention and the reason that I leave this off is simply that pursuit angles stink in Madden 24. If you guys have watched this game at all, players track the inside hip. Honestly, they track uh, the inside hip and, and then an invisible ghost inside hip. Uh, next to the actual ball carrier and they take terrible angles in this game So I choose to leave this off and take over my user More often and steer the guy exactly where I want him to go How many times when you leave this on have you noticed that you're running towards a guy and then he kind of just Auto steers himself down and inside and then follows the guy as he corners and turns up the sideline I believe that that is due to heat seeker assist in combo with the terrible pursuit angle. So it's the AI trying to calculate a pursuit angle and trying to calculate a heat seeker tackle animation for you at the same time. And oftentimes when you stack that together, it makes a really nasty tasting cocktail and you do not want that at all with this. So that is one that I definitely leave off. The next one is defensive switch assist. I leave this off for very much the same reason. When you go to click onto a DB, and you're trying to intercept or user pick a ball and that switch assist is on, it doesn't give you immediate control of your defensive back or your safety that you're trying to click onto for the purpose of intercepting the ball. After about a step or two, it gives you control. Well, that step or two is the difference between you getting better position than your opponent for a catch when they throw it your way or giving up a completion because you had no control. I leave this off. From here, Controlled player art. You may see players online that when they play, it looks like their zone is on the field and you're like, how'd they do that? That's this mode. It kind of just helps you understand where you're supposed to be. Again, probably not great because it's relying on Madden's AI and human players are smarter than Madden's AI. So uh, if you turn this on and you follow what it tells you to do, don't yell at me because uh, your opponent probably has a better route combo that's gonna trick it. So don't leave that on. Coach mode, doesn't matter. Player sliders don't matter unless you're playing a, uh, you know, a CFM, I guess. So that's for offline play. Cross play. This is a major, major topic this year. And uh, a lot of players really um, are enjoying this. I know there's a lot of input delay. I don't honestly believe that that is attributed to the cross play servers. Um, I just think the game has input delay in general. We'll get to something there uh, momentarily. If you guys want to play more players, you get sick and tired of playing the same five people every day. This is a great option for you um it's made the game more enjoyable for pretty much everyone um we are i believe still waiting on it to come to cfm which is pretty brutal but it's great for online head-to-head -head. accessibility options um so i am going to touch on one of these real quick um, because this is all personal preference but i will tell you that this one right here the enlarge on field graphics sometimes this is a nice one to turn on especially if you guys are using a worse quarterback and we're talking about that placement and accuracy that i mentioned earlier having a larger meter so you can actually release the pressure when that bar fills to the green is going to be helpful now the downside to it is that the other icons for your receivers are so big that sometimes it actually covers a safety or a corner and you think that you have a wide open touchdown and you throw it and that defensive back was just behind that giant icon so be careful with this if you do choose to turn it on. The rest of this is gonna be up to you. If you wanna turn vibration on or off, feel free. If you have color blindness options, uh, if you wanna contrast or mix it for the purpose of uh, content, feel free to do that. Um, that's basically it with that. I will say that in terms of the rest of it, um, I would recommend if you guys do any content with this, I turn off the in-game commentary because um, you know when I'm playing, I'm talking to my chat. I don't want any in-game commentary from Brandon Gowden and uh, I forget who the other one is. Is it Lewis Riddick? But um, I don't like that coming through. Um, you also can remove the actual menu music. 
especially if you guys stream this game you don't want to get any dmca issues because the game's audio uh is is playing in the background most of you guys probably listen to spotify or something like that when you're playing madden anyway so feel free to turn that off if you don't like the in-game music the rest is all personal preference uh we're going to skip over penalties we're going to skip over player skill. That doesn't matter. We're going to skip over CPU skill. Those are all things for your personal enjoyment if you just play offline by yourself. Visual feedback. Uh, this one can be kind of helpful. You guys may wish to uh, turn some of these on. Um, it, it will kind of help you guys understand, you know, where you're supposed to, you know, cover. Defensive pass coverage, visual assist will kind of tell you, you know, who your guy is. Kind of similar to what I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, the rest of this is all just up to you. I will say that camera toggle, turn this off. I can't tell you how many times I've been trying to set up a defense and that input delay we just talked about kind of kicks in and you end up in a situation where uh, the camera toggled down to like zoom mode or superstar mode. And you're like looking at the quarterback from the linebacker's point of view and you can't see what's going on behind you. Turn this off. This is really, really big. It'll you know prevent the camera zooming in or out when you're setting up defenses or uh, offensive setups pre-snap. Uh, the rest of this, uh, you know, personal preference. Some of you are going to want standard view. Some of you are going to want to zoom out, uh, you know, be able to see the entire field more. Standard, standard's what I use. So I'm going to leave that there. From here, I would say the only thing that you guys are going to want to do is maybe take a look at this particular setting. You got performance mode. I talked about input delay. Uh, this game does kind of have some frame rate issues from what I can tell. Things just kind of catch and skip and kind of burp a little bit as you're playing the game. And that is something that you probably are not gonna wanna deal with. Um, if you guys are content creators that are just you know worried about image quality, you know rendering, things like that, go with that. If you guys are more focused on the gameplay side of things, go to performance. So that is all the settings that we use here for setting the tone in Madden 24. Now let's go ahead and kind of briefly gloss over some important things because I did mention um, that we were gonna talk about setting the foundation. It's important to remember that I did do a playlist right at the very beginning of Madden 24, right here on the channel. So again, if you're enjoying this content, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and also drop a comment down below. But if you guys kind of want to take a look at just some of the general thoughts about approaching a new Madden, I did a Madden 24 preparation playlist the very first week the game came out. All those videos will help you very much if you guys are enjoying this video. But we're going to segue that into some general, um, you know, some general practice type deals here where we're just going to kind of talk about the obvious metas that exist and what you need to be prepared for. Now, of course, if you guys are watching this late in the Madden season, this may not apply due to patching or whatever. So, um, you know, if this is obviously very, very different due to patching late in the year, you guys can skip through this. So here we are at the practice mode screen. I think this is where a lot of players need to spend more time. Um, I know there's pro players out there that love to do the, oh, I don't play the game that much thing. The truth is their practice mode is a circle of the best Madden players in the world in game getting reps. And the average Madden player does not have that camp in their background to be able to rely on for repetition. So it's gonna be you and two controllers in practice mode, repeating the things that you see online. Now, there are different types of practice. You've got normal, which is gonna be an offense and a defense. You've got offense only. So if you just wanna run your offense on air, get to learning timing windows for throws, things like that, this is a great option. I don't use it very often, but I'm gonna go normal. Now, player abilities. This is something that you guys um, will definitely want enabled. Passive abilities um, are very, very important. However, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't have X factors on. Um, you know, if you guys want to practice, you want to throw a couple interceptions, trying to learn how to make a throw. You don't want that defensive back turning into, you know, universal coverage mode. Uh, you could go passives only in this. I think that's a really good starting point. If you guys go into mutt practice mode right now, any player with an X factor starts and stays glowing, which is a bug. Um, so, you know, you may notice that being a difference in mutt practice mode until it gets fixed. Um, I think this one is really, really important. In Ultimate Team, a lot of players are going to hit every threshold, as I mentioned earlier. So you guys are going to want to enable perfect passing. Um, wasting 30 seconds setting up a, a blitz that you want to block and then a route combo to have your quarterback throw a inaccurate ball because he doesn't have 85 medium accuracy is a waste of everyone's time. Turn this on to enabled. Um, max player ratings, if you kind of want regs to feel like mutt, 
you could go home away or both teams with max ratings basically that's going to give everybody 99 everything so this is going to kind of help you guys isolate lines of code in the game to see when everything is equal what happens in a given scenario this can help you find sheddier formations you know if you're trying to do a pass rush and you got 99 everything and you notice that a certain formation gets to the quarterback faster than another with a base rush this can help you isolate those types of things so this is actually a really nice feature um you know you can go both home away whatever it is you want to do if you guys are just playing regs and you want to practice i would just turn this off again competitive game style big head modes a waste of time display prepay uh, art enabled disabled i know there were some bugs attributed to this earlier i disable it just because you know it's not going to be there um, necessarily in a game for you uh, so you want to kind of practice as close to as much as you play. So those are your settings. Now let's get into choosing your playbooks. This one's tough. This one's tough because it comes down to, you know, at the end of the day, you have to put in the work to understand what it is you want to do when you are approaching a Madden. Are you a run heavy player? Are you a pass heavy player? Are you somebody who likes to be under center? Are you a shotgun player because it feels more comfortable to you? Do you want the element of the option? Do you want more RPOs to your offense? What is it you're trying to establish? So for that question, I can't answer that for you, but I will kind of give you guys some general thoughts about what Madden is right now and where I would start. Again, with this being September 17th, when I'm recording this, this could seem a little bit dated if you're watching this in February. So take this, you know, and, and put it in a time capsule as it pertains to what I'm telling you right here. Right now in Madden, the game is based on a loop blitz meta. It's also very, very impacted by what is called read and react AI, which we're gonna do a rant on a little bit later this week because I have thoughts on that topic as a whole. Essentially what read and react AI is, is after you run a certain true run play twice, the game will start to auto shed, auto gap shoot, and basically kind of baby run commit it without you having any risk of it being a pass and being, you know, a one play touchdown. So with that in mind, I would strongly urge whatever playbook you choose to be very RPO heavy. So for me, I like to run the Kansas City Chiefs offense. That doesn't mean you guys have to run Kansas City. Although if you guys wanna run my offense, it is on gridirongameplans.gg, included with everything. And I like this because it gives me a lot of different RPOs. Now on the defensive side of the football, I think that it is a game that is predicated again on the loop blitz meta and the most popular loop blitzing formations are the nickel 3-3 and the dollar. You can find both of those defenses in the 4-6 defensive playbook. Again, I tend to go a little bit off meta and do my own thing defensively you guys want to check out my and goose's three four odd defense that is probably the fastest growing defensive meta in competitive madden right now as of mid-september you guys can find that on the website as well so i'm going to choose the four six defense here as it pertains the defensive side of the ball so we have a controller on offense and a controller on defense now we need to get into practice mode and i'm not going to spend 20 minutes here in practice mode we're already up on a 24 minute video here right now with this you're going to want to kind of start off with trying to identify your favorite routes obviously posts corners drags and whips those are probably the most important routes in the game so when you search through your playbooks you want to try to find formations that have a lot of those routes so for me my base offense is the gun tight open and i audible into a lot of stuff again you guys can check out that kansas city offense but what do you see you see slot post with a post route you see whips shallow corner stop left outside receiver you also see the whip found in bench dig pivot to the right slot receiver z spot dig another whip to the outside left receiver you keep scanning this playbook post corner drive whip to the outside right receiver and the reason these are important is because uh you can motion them across the formation and they don't flip like a hot routed whip because i know a lot of you're like well that's a hot route Zan. but you see that we have a lot of different whips that are able to be motioned we also have some very unique corner route stock especially when you don't have slot apprentice everywhere or hot route master in mud at this point bench z spot corners to both sides great base play right so that's great so you can identify a formation that's got a passing offense that is a good template that is not going to require that you have a million different apprentices on the field and then you start to get into the general 
overview of an offense. I said, RPOs, why? Well, the read and react AI will react if I spam inside zone out of the Trey Y flex strong, but it won't react if I run the zone peak RPO in the same way. So I can spam RPO zone peak. I cannot spam inside zone. So you see that in terms of the play calls in this formation, I have run this about three more times. So you see right here, I've run this RPO zone peak about 300% more than I've run the inside zone out of the same formation. Now, they're, they're also not the same run blocking scheme, but you'll notice this trend throughout the playbook as a whole. If I were to take a look here, inside zone in the bunch strong nasty, very few play calls for not a great yards per carry. RPO zone read, this one's a little bit more meta, so players are learning how to stop this because everyone runs it, but you see I've called it a lot more due to the read and react AI. Same thing here, inside zone, RPO. Good yards per carry, but low number of play calls. RPO zone bubble, great yards per carry, not as good as the actual inside zone, but way more play calls. And you'll see that I kind of carry that forward throughout the entire playbook. You have to run RPOs to run the ball effectively in this game. Otherwise, Read and React AI takes over. And again, we'll talk about that more. But this is gonna help you guys get off on the right foot is understanding that RPOs are your run game in Madden 24, not regular runs. And then from there, like I said, it comes down to learning how to block the blitz. You have to have formations in your offense that are going to help you pick up pressure. So if you're gonna run formations that don't have a tight end attached, you need to learn how to block the most common metas that you're going to face online. So dollar being one of those metas is a very, very important defense. So you're gonna see a lot of people are gonna do the baseline, they're gonna press, some of them are gonna pinch and they're gonna mug down here and they're gonna crash up. This is a very, very popular tactic. You have to know that when you face this, you gotta block a running back, you gotta slide protect to the right and you gotta ID the mic on the left. This is why I constantly put all of my offenses through the ringer because I want to test those things. Now, of course, I didn't set up a route combo there. I just set up the pass protection. I needed a pull route for that safety, but you saw that the pressure didn't get home. Without this lab work being put in where you go into practice mode and do this 30, 40, 50 times to see how consistent it is, you're gonna find yourself frustrated because you're only testing it live. It's a lot more pressure filled. You could fail here a million times and nobody's gonna see it. Once you succeed, you rep it over and over, find its consistency rate, apply it into your offense. It becomes installed, you're good to go. Then of course you have to start to prepare for loop blitz metas. So of course people are gonna start to put these corners in on the hips of the defensive ends and contain, and for what it's worth, I fully expect this to be patched. And then from there, different problems might arise. You know, a lot of players do slide protect to the right, ID this left corner. Uh, and if that doesn't work, you're gonna have to continue labbing. And you see right there, that was okay, but you know, pocket kind of collapsed. For the record, there are better pickups for this blitz than what I just showed you. Much better. Go to Gridiron Game Plans if you guys want to. But this is how you start to rep your offense. Once you find the formulas, you're understanding, okay, when I face this blitz style, I need to make sure that my running back is doing this and I'm doing this with my offensive line. These are my four options that I can throw to. If you want to use a running back, you've got to find a way to block it with a tight end. So maybe you go ahead and say, all right, well, when I'm facing this, I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to condense down my formation. Colt Komet's going to stay in at tight end. I'm going to go ahead and slide protect over to the left to make sure that this corner coming in off the left is somebody we are worried about. And hopefully this can help us out. So now all of a sudden we've got kind of something like this. And, you know, uh, we're, we're hoping that this protection works. We snap the ball. And, you know, it looks pretty good. And then we throw the, the corner out. This time we put a streak on the field. So having multiple ways to pick up all the blitzes is key. You want to be able to mix up whether or not you're using your running back every time to pick up a blitz or your tight end. Once you can get to a point where your opponent doesn't know who the hot read is going to be because they don't know whether you're picking up the blitz with a running back or a tight end or even a motion snap receiver, you're going to be in a much better place. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there. I think that these settings and these ideologies are going to get you in a better spot to play better Madden in general. If you guys are struggling on the defensive side of the ball, don't worry. We've got plenty of more defensive content coming here on the channel. In the meantime, you guys should definitely go check out GridironGamePlans.gg. So much more coming on the way. It's been arguably the hardest I've ever worked in the first month of a Madden and I'm only just getting started. If you guys liked the video, again, subscribe to the channel, notification bell, drop a comment below, and give the video a like. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, this is Zan. Get in the lab and good luck.